Reels recap here. In the heart of the desert, a group of boys dig holes in the sand beneath the scorching sun. Suddenly, a rattlesnake slithers nearby. Overwhelmed by exhaustion and despair, one boy decides to remove his shoes and touch the snake, sealing his fate. Meanwhile, in the city, Stanley Yelnats IV is walking along when a pair of shoes unexpectedly falls on his head, knocking him down. Since his father is developing a cure for stinky feet, Stanley decides to take the shoes home. Just then, the police surround him. Those shoes belong to a famous baseball player and were stolen from a charity event, leading the cops to believe Stanley is the thief. They take him to see his parents, and the situation looks suspicious. His dad, Stanley Yelnats III, has an apartment filled with dozens of shoes, and Stanley IV has posters of the baseball star on his wall. Based on this evidence, Stanley is taken to court and given two choices, go to jail or spend 18 months at Camp Green Lake. Stanley evidently chooses to go to the camp, and during the trip, he wonders if this incident is part of his family curse. As the bus crosses a vast desert dotted with holes, Stanley briefly imagines seeing a merchant with his mule, but dismisses it as his imagination. He arrives at a small, shady town filled with boys wearing prison uniforms. There, Stanley meets Mr. Sir, the warden's right-hand man, who finds Stanley's name amusing. Stanley explains that the family surname, Yelnats, is Stanley, spelled backward, and naming the son Stanley became a tradition to keep the pun. However, Mr. Sir isn't interested and instead explains how things work at the camp. There are no watchtowers or fences because the desert stretches for hundreds of miles without a single source of water, making escape impossible. Stanley is given two sets of clothing and a shovel, which he'll use to dig holes. Each day, he must dig one hole, five feet deep, and measure it with the shovel to ensure it's the right size. The longer it takes Stanley to dig, the longer he'll be exposed to the scorching sun. He also has to be vigilant for rattlesnakes and yellow-spotted lizards, as their bites can be fatal. Next, Stanley meets the camp's counselor, Dr. Pendansky, who gives him a tour and emphasizes the number one rule, do not bother the warden. Pendansky instructs the other boys to show Stanley where he'll sleep, pointing out vomit stains from a previous occupant who met a grim fate. Although Pendansky addresses the boys by their real names, they only refer to each other by the nicknames they've acquired at camp. The youngest boy is Zero, who gets that nickname because he never talks. Later, Stanley asks where he can fill his canteen, but when he uses one boy's real name, the boy shoves him, reminding him to use their nicknames. Stanley then gets dinner, which is mainly beans prepared in different ways. X-Ray takes some of Stanley's food, saying he deserves it more since Stanley hasn't dug a hole yet. The boys ask Stanley why he was sent to the camp, and when he says he was accused of stealing famous shoes, Zero surprises everyone by asking if the shoes had stars on them. As Stanley confirms it, he recalls part of the trial, where the baseball star explained that he grew up in an orphanage and donated to charity, accusing Stanley of being a fake fan. Late in the evening, Stanley can't sleep and remembers that his grandfather claims the family is cursed, which is why Stanley Yelnats III is never successful with his inventions. Even Stanley Yelnats I was unlucky, he made a fortune in the stock market but was killed by the infamous criminal known as Kissing Kate. She would kiss her victims after killing them, leaving bright lipstick on their faces that's how she got that nickname Kissing Kate. However, she didn't kiss Stanley the first, she just took his treasure chest and left him stranded in the desert. The following morning, the boys are woken up while it's still dark to start working. Everyone gets a tortilla for breakfast and a shovel, but when Stanley grabs one, X-Ray pushes him and takes it. It turns out X-Ray's shovel is shorter, and he doesn't let anyone else use it. When they get to the place where they need to dig, Mr. Sir tells Stanley that if he finds anything cool while digging, he should report it. If the warden likes what Stanley finds, he will get a day off. However, Mr. Sir says they're not looking for anything special, it's just to help build their character. All the boys start digging, and sometimes the dirt they throw lands in someone else's hole. Stanley asks them to be careful, but they just laugh at him. While Stanley digs, he thinks about the curse again. Stanley's ancestor Ilya worked on a pig farm and fell in love with the boss's daughter, Myra. He went to Madame Zeroni, a local fortune teller, to find out how to win Myra's heart. Madame Zeroni told him to forget about Myra and go to America to find his destiny. But Ilya didn't give up and asked his boss for Myra's hand in marriage. Another man, who was offering a big pig as a dowry, was chosen instead of Ilya. 
Feeling sorry for him, Madame Zeroni taught Ilya a trick. She told him to carry a small piglet up the mountain every day to drink from a stream while Ilya sang a song to it. Ilya would grow stronger and the pig would grow bigger, making it a great dowry. After giving the pig to Myra's father, Ilya had to return and carry Madame Zeroni up the mountain so she could drink from the stream too. If he didn't do this, a curse would fall on him and all his descendants. Ilya followed the steps for a few days, and the pig grew very large. He took it to Myra's father, but both pigs ended up being the same size to the other candidate's pig. So, the father let Myra choose who to marry. Myra couldn't decide between the two men and suggested a guessing game to choose. Ilya was so upset by her careless attitude that he decided to go to America, just as Madame Zeroni had advised. However, he forgot to carry Madame Zeroni up the mountain before leaving, so she cursed his family as promised. Back in the present, Mr. Sir drives by the holes with his truck so the boys can fill their canteens with water. He teases Stanley about getting his first blisters on his hands. Zero is the first one to finish digging because he is very fast, and the other boys joke that he must be eating the sand. When Stanley finally finishes digging his hole, no one helps him climb out, so he has to figure out how to do it by himself. When he gets back to camp, he finds Mr. Sir pointing a gun at him. It turns out Mr. Sir is aiming at a yellow-spotted lizard. The first shot misses, and the lizard jumps towards Stanley, but Mr. Sir shoots again and kills it. As days go by, Stanley gets used to the camp's routine. He wakes up early, eats awful beans, and spends the day digging, which gives him more blisters on his hands. There are often dangerous animals around, and sometimes the shower doesn't work at the camp. The other boys keep bothering Stanley, making fun of him for being soft. To avoid trouble, Stanley keeps a low profile. When he writes to his mom, he lies and says he's having a great time at a normal summer camp. One afternoon, Stanley finds a fossil and shows it to Pendansky, the camp doctor. Pendansky tells him that the warden doesn't care about fossils. He also shares that there used to be a lake in the area and that the land belonged to the warden's grandfather. The flashback reveals how the town used to be vibrant and bustling. A merchant named Sam regularly visited with his cart, pulled by his mule, to sell amazing onions. He claimed they could cure any illness and repel dangerous lizards. Sam had feelings for the local teacher, Catherine, and always brought a sack of onions just for her. In return, Catherine would give him a jar of peaches she had collected. However, the men in the town didn't like the attention Sam received from Catherine, as they all admired her and were jealous of her affection towards him. On a rainy day, Catherine had to dismiss the kids from school due to leaks in the roof. Sam volunteered to fix them, which gave him more opportunities to spend time with her. He went on to repair other parts of the school as well. However, he had to endure inappropriate comments from adults during the evening classes. The warden's grandfather, Walker, even asked Catherine out, but she refused, which angered him. Despite this, the school became the most attractive building in town, thanks to Sam's efforts. Unfortunately, Sam lost his mule, so he instead gets a boat. One rainy afternoon, Sam and Catherine finally gathered enough courage to kiss, not realizing they were being watched by Walker. He quickly spread the news around town. Within hours, the townspeople gathered and set fire to the school as punishment. Catherine hurried to the sheriff for help, but he was drunk and demanded a kiss from her. When Catherine pushed him away, the sheriff insulted her and used derogatory language against Sam, reminding her that interracial relationships were against the law and Sam would be killed. Shocked and horrified, Catherine rushed to warn Sam, but it was too late. The townspeople shot Sam while he was on his boat. Later, Catherine returned and shot the sheriff before giving him the kiss he demanded. She then left town and became an outlaw known as Kissing Kate. Back in the present, X-Ray approaches Stanley and tells him that if he finds anything next time, he should bring it to him. Later in camp, Stanley accidentally falls on one of his bullies and almost gets into a fight. However, the other boys quickly intervene and calm the situation down. Now, Stanley has earned their respect. Stanley earns the nickname, Caveman, and even gets a better spot in the water line. Later, he receives a letter from his mother, informing him that his father's experiment keeps failing and they might be evicted by the landlord soon. Zero notices Stanley reading and confesses that he never learned to read. He asks Stanley to teach him, 
but Stanley refuses, claiming he's not a good teacher and needs rest at the end of the day after digging all day. During another digging session, Stanley is shocked to find a small object with the initials KB. The boys speculate if the object is a shotgun shell, but it appears too thin. X-Ray takes the object, disregarding Stanley's attempt to stand himself. When Pendansky sees it, he informs the boss, who quickly arrives. The boys are surprised to find out that the boss is a beautiful woman. She is delighted with the discovery and instructs X-Ray to take the day off while ordering the others to thoroughly excavate the area around X-Ray's hole. That afternoon, the boys work harder than usual, but they don't find anything significant because they're digging in the wrong spot. For the next few days, the boys continue digging in the same tunnel they've been working on, but they only find a small dial. Eventually, the warden gives up on the search, and the boys return to digging their own individual holes. The following day, while Mr. Sir is refilling their canteens, one of the boys steals a bag of sunflower seeds from the truck. Once Mr. Sir leaves, the boys start sharing the seeds amongst themselves. Unfortunately, Mr. Sir soon realizes the bag is missing and turns the truck around. The boys quickly try to hide the stolen seeds, but they accidentally spill at Stanley's feet. He hurriedly covers them with sand. When Mr. Sir returns, he spots the seeds. Stanley takes the blame, surprising everyone. Mr. Sir takes Stanley to see the warden for punishment. Inside her office, there are many posters about kissing Kate. The warden shows Stanley her special nail polish made with rattlesnake venom. After swiftly applying the nail polish, the warden reprimands Mr. Sir for disturbing Stanley's digging over a stupid thing like seeds. She then orders Stanley back to digging. When Stanley returns to the digging area, the other boys see him as a hero, and Zero has finished his hole. In gratitude, Stanley agrees to teach Zero how to read. The next time they encounter Mr. Sir, he has two gruesome scars from the venomous nails, and he's so enraged with Stanley that he refuses to refill his canteen. As Stanley recalls what he saw in the office, he realizes that the small tube he found was kissing Kate's lipstick. Another flashback reveals that Kate only sought revenge on those involved in Sam's death and the school's destruction. However, she did steal a lot. After taking the treasure chest from Stanley I, she buried it where the lake once stood. While resting, Kate was discovered by Walker and his wife, who were struggling financially because the town had fallen into ruin after the lake dried up on the day of Sam's death. Instead of harming them, Kate decided on a more sweet form of revenge, she lets a lizard bite her, taking the location of the chest to her grave. This ensures that William and all his descendants, like the warden, would be endlessly searching in the vast desert for the treasure. In the present, Stanley begins teaching Zero, whose real name is Hector Zeroni, how to read and write. Hector has a connection to the past as he is a descendant of Madame Zeroni who cursed Stanley I. Because Hector is a quick digger, he starts assisting Stanley with his holes, which makes the other boys jealous. One afternoon, Hector opens up about his mother, who worked hard to provide for him but one day she disappeared on him. Since then, Zero has been living on the streets. Later, one of the mean boys keeps bothering Stanley for getting assistance in the hole. Stanley stands up to him, and Pendansky suggests they settle it by fighting. As they wrestle, Stanley is quickly overpowered, so Zero steps in to help and almost hurts the other boy badly. Pendansky fires a shot into the air to stop them, and soon the warden arrives to find out what's going on. The boys explain that Zero is assisting Stanley, so Stanley quickly explains that he's teaching Zero to read in exchange. The warden is really angry, and Pendansky keeps insulting Zero, calling him stupid. Finally, Zero loses his temper and hits Pendansky with a shovel before running away into the desert. Mr. Sir wants to chase after him, but the warden says no. Since Zero doesn't have anyone, they could just erase his records and act like he was never here. Later, the boys talk about how Zero might die out in the desert. Stanley can't stop worrying and remembers the story of Stanley the first surviving 16 days in the desert after being robbed by Kate. It seems he found shelter in a place called God's Thumb, but no one knows what that is because Stanley the first was half crazy when they found him and couldn't explain. The next day, a new kid comes to take Zero's place, which upsets Stanley. He makes a plan and when Mr. Sir comes to refill their water bottles, Stanley steals the truck. Mr. Sir chases after him and grabs onto the door. Stanley tries to push him away, 
but he gets distracted and accidentally drives the truck into a hole. Not giving up, Stanley jumps out of the truck and dashes into the desert while the other boys cheer him on. When the warden learns about it, she tells Mr. Sir to say Stanley is missing in two weeks because by then there won't be any traces left. In the blazing heat, Stanley keeps walking, ignoring all the dangerous lizards around. Finally, he discovers Sam's boat, and underneath it, he finds Zero, exhausted but alive. Zero has been surviving by eating the peaches Kate had given Sam years ago, which turned into jam in the jars. After Stanley also eats some of the jam, he spots a mountain in the distance that resembles a thumb, and he realizes that's where his ancestor survived. The two of them leave the boat and begin climbing the mountain, which is quite challenging. Stanley slips at one point and nearly falls, but Zero swiftly reaches out with his shovel to help him up. Unfortunately, this results in Zero hurting his hands, so Stanley does his best to bandage them. They continue for a while, but Zero soon grows weak and collapses. Stanley manages to catch him before he rolls away, but Zero is too tired and passes out. Determined not to give up, Stanley lifts his friend and carries him all the way to the top of the mountain, similar to how his ancestor carried the pig. Finally, Stanley spots some greenery and finds the small stream with water and Sam's tasty onions. He wakes Zero up right away, and they both eat and drink to regain their strength. Stanley also sings a song that his family enjoys, unaware that it's the same song passed down from the pig's time. Now, Madame Zeroni's spirit can finally find peace. With the curse lifted from the family, Stanley III successfully completes his invention and finds a solution for foot odor by mixing peaches and onions, which the family celebrates. The following morning, Zero makes a big confession, he was the one who stole the shoes. He mistook them for donated shoes at the shelter he stayed in and took them without knowing they were valuable. When the police started searching for him, he panicked and threw the shoes off the bridge, unintentionally hitting Stanley. Zero gets caught the next day stealing shoes from Payless. Surprisingly, Stanley isn't angry, he believes it was meant to happen and feels relieved. Meanwhile, Stanley's lawyer arrives at the camp to take him home because it's been proven he's innocent. The warden refuses to cooperate, but the lawyer vows to return with more help. As for Stanley and Zero, once they're back on their feet, they go back to the digging site and locate the hole where Stanley found the lipstick. After a lot of digging, they're thrilled to finally uncover the legendary chest. At that moment, the warden and Mr. Sir stumble upon Stanley and Zero, but suddenly a swarm of lizards emerges and covers both the boys and the chest, seemingly protecting them. The warden decides to wait, hoping the lizards will harm the boys. She shares a story about her grandfather making her dig even on Christmas. Morning arrives, and the lizards haven't moved or harmed the boys. The tense moment is interrupted by the arrival of the lawyer, who shows up with a few police officers. The warden fabricates a story about the boys stealing the chest from her office and fleeing with it. However, Zero proves their innocence by showing Stanley's name on the chest. Afterwards, they all head back to town, and the lawyer puts the chest in her car, indicating they're leaving. But Stanley refuses to go without Zero. So, the lawyer requests Stanley's file. When they realize the file is missing, the cop makes a call to authorize an investigation. They discover that Mr. Sir is a fugitive and Pendansky isn't a real doctor. As a result, all three, Mr. Sir, Pendansky, and the warden, are arrested. At that moment, rain falls for the first time in decades, and the boys emerge to celebrate. A few days later, Stanley and Zero, along with their family, open the chest and discover a trove of treasure, including shares for A.T. and .T. Stanley decides to share the treasure with Zero, and the family approves. With his share, Zero hires private investigators to find his mother, leading to a deeply emotional reunion. Sometime later, the camp shuts down, and the boys receive proper counseling. Stanley's and Zero's families become neighbors in a posh neighborhood, and their friends from camp visit frequently. Stanley's invention becomes a massive success, and the renowned baseball star ends up working on his advertisements, showing that everything was interconnected from the start. I hope you enjoy watching our recap video. Do subscribe and click the notification button to help the growth of this channel.